I take this opportunity to make note to welcome. I take this opportunity to welcome all the president from different clubs for this joint, uh, you know, meeting, a speaker meeting. And now I would request all the presidents of the clubs to do the coloring part of it. Thank you. This meeting of Rotary Club of Chennai, the joint meeting of Rotary Club of Chennai Mitra is called to order. I can now request a CDB to do the invocation song. No, I, I have a humble request. Yeah. Uh, can you put all of them on mute because I find somebody popping up and talking. Yeah. For a smooth function, uh, CNB, uh, please. I'm doing it. Yeah. Uh, please make the. Uh, please make it the presidents as the co-hosts and the rest of them can be on mute. Unmute, unmute. You are ready, you can speak. Kriti, unmute. Okay, now I would request, uh, thank you, Shani, for the navigation song. Now I would request our uh, uh, president, uh, Rotarian Suresh Srinivasan, to Give a welcome speech. Good evening, uh, my dear Rotarians, Mitrans, and uh, the joint club uh, meeting, all the presidents who have joined us this evening. Uh, Chennai Kilpak, Raj Shaker, Chennai Harmony, uh, Chennai Tirwan Muir, Sharda, then Harmony uh, Niranjan, Chennai Galaxy, uh, Giri is set to join us, Roy Pitta, Reggie, and uh, Mogopair Radha Krishnan. Most welcome. We are very happy that uh, you guys consented instantaneously when I approached you for a joint meet. And I'm very extremely happy that uh, 
we are having a good uh, number as of now and as the meeting progresses i would uh, want to believe that uh, there will be more people joining in because this is a, a pretty interesting subject and that touches uh, the hearts and minds of all of us because i think almost all of us own a car and would certainly be interested in knowing a few things more than what we already know about and uh, kailash as i know uh, is is one of the uh, famous guys around in town who has been in this vintage car uh, business for more than 30 years he has uh, headed many organizations uh, for maintaining and restoration of vintage cars and has uh, uh, has had many opportunities to have rallies and functions uh, in the past incidentally kailash also happens to be my mother in law's first uh, paternal cousin which will be surprised to know uh, so i i certainly look forward to a great evening uh, of uh, an evening of revelation where most of us been driving cars for 20 years 30 years 40 years still there may be a few tricks or two which kailash may uh, reveal to us this evening and we get to know about things thank you very much and uh, i wish all of you a very pleasant evening thank you Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, President, and for the welcome address. Now I would leave the forum to the other presidents, if they have anything to announce. Uh, you have you have time to do that, and I would request other club presidents. If you have anything to express, please do so. Thank you. And uh, post this, uh, the speaker would uh, come in and uh, <clears throat> post this. There will be an introduction of the speaker. Uh, nothing really. Just thanks for having us here. Happy to be part of this event. Thanks, thanks, Suresh. Thanks, Nitin. Welcome, welcome, most welcome. Suresh, thanks for organizing. Pleasure is mine. Things. I think it's interesting to know about the car and very subject also very interesting, and the vintage is very attractive. So thanks for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I hope uh, Kailash keeps that uh, thing going and uh, make it interesting. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, sir. Kailash is a good friend of mine for the last 25 years. Yeah, you know that. Nice we meet each other in the cricket club quite uh, regularly. So thank okay. you. It's a good opportunity for hearing him. Thank you so much. Sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, thank you, presidents. Now I would request. Yeah, I'll unmute, uh, Sarada, ma'am. Please unmute. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Suresh. It's uh, nice to be with uh, friends. And uh, uh, the last few days of our presidency. It definitely uh, uh, one more day to wear a collar. So <laughs> soon it's going to be uh, passing on, but lot yeah. of relief, of course. So uh, let's sit back and relax. Yeah, uh, there's uh, a signing Suresh, off moment for us. <laughs> But in Suresh, thank you so much uh, for choosing a road less taken, uh, because a, a lot a lot of uh, events are all about music. Uh, motivation and other topics. This is this is a road definitely not taken, and we have uh, Mr. Kailash also having a Rolls Royce uh, to take us along that road. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Presidents. Now I would request Rotarian uh, our President Suresh Srinivasan to give introduction about the speaker. Yeah, good evening once again, uh, my dear friends in Rotary and uh, my fellow Mitrans. I'm very extremely happy to have uh, Kailash uh, Kailash here this evening, and uh, it's my proud privilege to uh, introduce him to all of you. It is said that uh, your creative process will get a huge boost when you follow your passion. You are more inclined to come up with creative ideas when you like what you do. That is the case with uh, Mr. V. S. Kailash. Yeah. Graduate with physics, mathematics, and chemistry, and a postgraduate in marketing management from University of Madras, who turned into a completely self-taught automobile expert, who can diagnose faults in a jiffy, conduct quiz on automobiles with emphasis on the mechanical aspects for automobile engineering students. All this because of his love for cars. He is an ardent restorer of vintage cars and collector of vintage cars. Owns five cars and has restored more than thirteen cars. He is the founder secretary and currently the vice president of the Madras Heritage Motoring Club, having organized 28 rallies since 2002. A keen tennis and golf player, he is a member of the Madras Cricket Club and the Madras Gymkhana Golf Club. He is a Freemason and a past master of the Mount Lodge. 
is the chairman of adr chapter of cii bist to mentor budding entrepreneurs he is a member of indo dutch chamber of commerce he is a charter member and past president of roti club of chennai towers he has addressed more than 40 clubs in and around chennai on vintage cars vis-a-vis -vis contemporary cars i am happy to present to you the multifaceted mr b s kailash thank you and now i would request the guest speaker to take the floor and it's all yours sir welcome thank you so much uh, for, at the outset i wish to thank profusely rotarian suresh nimasan president of rc mitra for the lovely introduction and for the opportunity given this evening to address a galaxy of presidents rotarians and sanets and rotractors i never thought i'll get this opportunity in my lifetime to address a wonderful galaxy of rotarians thank you very much for, for this opportunity once again uh, i would like to dedicate this speech to my late uncle metal lanki captain padmanabhan k padmanabhan paddy as he was known a whiz on automobiles a great pilot who taught rajiv gandhi how to fly a blemishless record spanning over five decades uh, from indian airlines he is the one who brought the airbus from toulouse and uh, that's where i picked up it's in the genes with regard to automobiles once again uh, while dwelling on the subject of creativity which uh, suresh our president just mentioned i thought i should share with you an anecdote to start off with which happened in a, a school it, uh, mind you it's a government school and you had the inspector visiting and as you all know inspectors have this uncanny ability to con our students and make them feel small um, with a lot of questions uncomfortable questions or questions which can't be answered so this uh, particular inspector at this school is class and you know he had floored them with a lot of questions and all of them answered very well the final question he thought will be a shot in his arm and he said can you tell me whether the word trouser is singular or plural the entire class was silent not a word from any of the students but one guy from the last row stood up and said sir i can answer this question yes you go ahead sir it's singular at the top and plural at the bottom you know what what happened after that the inspector was simply floored and immediately went and hugged him and told that your creativity is at its best and i would like to sponsor you and see through your education fees till you complete school finals on that note i thought i should start off this uh, meeting see the cars have been very passionate for me right from the early childhood let's say about 5 or 6 years when i was old i used to get attracted by looking at various models and the roads in chennai or madras as it was known were flooded with a lot of these cars you, you for instance you've seen now the q7s the q7 equivalents used by the ester axles were the chevrolet impala and the plymouth and dodge kingsway and the likes of these cars were used by them and more so the chevrolet impala with the pillarless version from the stables of gm the general motors as you are all aware the big 3 played a very major role until probably up to the early 80s with the advent of japanese they had to go down and you know learn quite a few things not that they were not aware of it they were very much aware but nevertheless japanese did teach them what is quality in toto so you had the q7 equivalent in those days as the chevrolet impala or the plymouth buying in the roads before i move further i thought i should tell you uh, with a brief preamble on the design aspects i will be talking addressing to you on the several designs presented by general motors as well as ford chrysler the big 3 and their contemporaries from mercedes benz porsche and italian car make makers like fiat alfa romeo then i shall move on to a video presentation uh, for about uh, 12 minutes 6 plus 6 one is a interview with a jennifer arul on ndtv another is a uh, model eight version of mine which had been restored painstakingly and there is a small bite on that followed by a quiz the quiz which i usually address to the annets 
no uh, and uh, i i i feel elated and motivated when i see the annets and and the road tractors attending and they and uh, they answering the questions very well because that gives me a lot of motivation to be a good speaker because as uh, uh, suresh srinivasan uh, mentioned during the beginning of the speech everyone gets butterflies in the stomach when they have to address our audience but nevertheless the crowd here put me at ease and brought down my fears to a long to a large extent with the bp not shooting up thanks to all of you rotarians being a past rotarian myself gives me immense pressure to be with all of you see by quick of fate i'm out of rotary but nevertheless i shall be with all of you very soon i was a charter member and past president of rotary club of chennai towers a very versatile club and a multifaceted club and i was proud to be the president during 2003 4 and conducted 56 projects in a span of 52 weeks and the highlight being the rila camp you know uh, being done for at uh, uh, st george school students okay and uh, and it was a runaway success and and this is the uh, brief background with regard to my rotary stint and uh, moving on to the subject i i thought i should uh, brief you uh, my first car to have been purchased early 90s you know i didn't have deep pockets being a student and uh, uh, just then started my career so i could all that i could muster was to buy a buck fiat a 1952 italian made buck fiat it was a completely built up unit car which was imported from italy and, and then uh, except for a few fittings which i added on in like what happened to uh, the dodge kingsway as well, as well as other cars which are assembled here uh, and including the modus oxfords these were also imported as cbus and then except for tires batteries and a few other uh, fitments rest of it came in as original equipment from italy so it is a no nonsense car once again on uh, the design aspect with regard to buck fiat i thought i should uh, dwell on the subject and brief you the buck fiat is a no nonsense car because the frugality of the design ensured that the car is globally acceptable though there was one major flaw in the design aspect as you can call it the radiator being situated behind the engine okay the uh, designer uh, it was a uh, aircraft engineer dante digosa aircraft engineer and when he sat on the table and made the blueprint for the car he was very familiar with designing aircraft in those days you might uh, recollect there were single engine propeller shaft aircrafts with the engine in the front and uh, the uh, engine being in the front and the axle being behind the engine this is again a very unique aspect which is there in the buck fiat the axle is behind the engine and the engine is mounted ahead of the axle and you have the uh, aircraft designer forgot to uh, have the radiator then as an afterthought he said cooling is at a stake so i should design a radiator and he had to locate it just behind the engine perhaps one of the few cars to have radiator being behind the engine because this car does not have a water pump it works on the principle of the convection principle and the water is getting circulated so this has got a inherent flaw for in the sense the cooling is always inadequate and uh, these were designed for cool climates like the alps and the alpine climate where it survived very well but when it came to the tropics like india you you cannot abuse a car much why i meant to say as a design flaw that indians tend to abuse cars this abuse cannot be withstood you can this car cannot withstand this abuse so you need to be perfect you need to be like caesar's wife above board always when it comes to maintenance and again our country knows only break down maintenance we never know what is preventive maintenance preventive maintenance is seldom practiced by our people more so when it comes to cars and machinery so because everything is pushed to the limit India is a land of frugality. We can't afford it. Ilas, Ilas. Yes. Sorry, pa. I think Ashwin's uh, mobile either try to get the whole uh, volume down. There's a light echo when you talk. Uh, my dear sir, just check if it's okay now. Ah, uh, now it's better. Okay, sir. Sorry to, uh, for that. Uh, 
ஒன்லி <laughs> but rest of them rest of the design is wonderful for instance it's tropicalized by having a drop hood when you see the car in a later video you'll recollect it's got a drop hood at the top so you can slide down the roof and it's a two seater and you know the design wise it's got the transverse spring at the front and two elliptical springs at the rear with a stabilizer arm at the rear and you know there is no stabilizer arm at the front and it's a cam and roller steering gear Overhead valve engine. The earlier ones were all side valves. 1952 model, which I have now, is a overhead valve and 500 cc. It's a very diminutive engine, but nevertheless a great performer at 90 kilometers cruising speed even now. There is one interesting anecdote which you, I thought I should share with you, which happened during the restoration way back in the 90s. See the car, as I uh, mentioned earlier. See, I am a hands-on person who can tune cars. get my hands dirty and get under the chassis and work on them but age being a factor as well as the time constraints what i do is sometimes engage mechanics and tell them what to do and keep going with my regular work this is only a hobby for me so krishnan who's been trained by tvs sundra motors right under the eyes of ts krishna in those days in the 60s was a guy who said he'll restore this car for me so he is the one who was assigned the job of restoring my buckwheat and you know what had happened as the luck would have it spares for italian cars more so for buckwheats are seldom available because these are all low production cars very few came in and i must as i mentioned to you earlier they can't take abuse so they went under they were found in these scrap yards faster than you could think so this car was a non runner for 25 years parked in a wayside garage and it was picked up by me because i fancied this shape and model so krishnan was assigned job and after completing the engine because the engine pistons were not available with the internet facility being what it is way back the state of the art was such that we couldn't locate clubs having spares like pistons and you know we had to rely on our own production uh, companies like the india pistons who came to my rescue mr murli dharan was the head of the Uh, after market uh, replacement spares so he said you can fit the requirement was 52 mm piston but he said you can bore the uh, block and make it 55 mm and use the agro engine piston which is used for spraying pesticides and all that stuff those pistons can be used and it, it the car can be made a runner so i said we'll do it only uh, drawback was the top dead center was 5 mm below the top dead center because the gudgeon pin hole the difference was there between the original pin original piston and the the uh, adapted one so after uh, the engine was assembled everything one day the car has to be had to be started i get a call while having lunch in the afternoon uh, christian calls me and tells me sir sir what have you done is gone for a waste i asked what happened christian nothing sir this car won't run and telling you what is i asked what the prachi the engine does not race it's only idling i told you not to go in for this adaptation work of going in for a piston which is not having a tdc top and 5 mm below the tdc i told you not to do that you've done it you ruined and my entire effort is come to a is not i told him krishnan hold on please tell me what is it that you've done on the timing mind you this all on the phone call he told me sir timing is set at 0 degrees i asked him krishnan how the hell you are such an experienced person how could you ever set it at 0 and tell me the car is not racing immediately set it to 12 degrees and you know the engine head has been shaved off much more than what is expected and then uh, still you make it at 0 degrees and tell me car, car engine does not race then after a pause he told me sir something remarkable sir i never knew that i had made a mistake myself but i what i appreciated him was his humility He is much more senior to me, more experienced, having worked only in Fiat cars and Sundra Motors, then stint in Dubai, and having come back and started 
started his own unit, but the humility to accept. Yes, even though not educated, you get humility only out of education. But with, even though not educated, he accepted the fault and said, "Sir, hats off to you, sir." Immediately, because a good mechanic is known by his diagnosis. Here again, gentlemen and rotarians and and and, and it's a, a road tractors. I'd like to tell you a small anecdote with regard to diagnostics. You know, the uh, diagnosing skills of a doctor as well as a mechanic are somewhat akin to each other. And you know, it so happened in a, one hot storm, there was this doctor who was not too very adept in his uh, profession, and he could somehow pull along and you know, uh, give uh, medicine and cure by hook or crook, as they call it. So, but he had a, a patient by name, John, walking in almost every day with the same chronic problem. One day, it, it so happened, it was raining cats and dogs, and we saw slowly John coming in. And you know, he, he thought to himself, well, again, I had it because the waiting room is packed. And this guy comes in sauntering and tells him, in principle, everyone talk, my chronic problem is yet to be solved. And you know, you have not done anything to it. Doctor was thoroughly cheesed off. And he said, pulled him aside and said, John, can you do one thing for me? Tell me, dog, what is it that I have to do? Can you go stand out and come back half or half an hour, doc? What do you mean, doc? It's raining cats and dogs, and you want me to stand for half an hour there? I'm sure to get pneumonia. That's exactly what I want you to get because I can cure pneumonia. That is, this, I would like to tell you, this is the uh, case when it comes to our mechanics also. See, some of them are very much endowed with excellent diagnosing skills, but some, what happens is they do it by the trial and error method with our cars as guinea pigs. So these are all some of the instances which I thought I should share with you. And many of them get the monitor, like Oda Oda Venkat, late Babu and other stuff. Oda Oda Venkat, I like to tell you who he is or who he was. Oda Oda Venkat, nightmare was, uh, what I would say, setting the differential of ambassador task without that humming. Because humming and differential, differential humming and ambassadors are synonymous with each other. So, what happens is, if there is a car which is coming in with the humming, especially ambassadors, those who, the senior Rotarians who are here will be familiar with ambassadors. Because ambassador, after the indigenization, the metallurgy, what it was, you know, we could never get the correct machining as well as the good bearings to avoid uh, humming. But cars up to 1962 ambassador were all uh, manufactured in UK and sent as semi CBUs, not fully built up uh, complete units, but semi uh, built up units. And you know, they came in with a wonderful uh, differential, which uh, seldom had this humming problem. So, uh, Venkat, what he used to do is, is rip open the differential to fit in new, new bearings, gears, pin, gear, pinion, differential pinions, gears, everything, assembly. But but to his uh, surprise, you'll find that the humming is much more than what it was earlier, prior to changing of bearing and all that. But, you know, again, opening up, then cutting the packing, then, you know, the, the mechanics have this uncanny ability of meshing the gears by applying paint to see the engagement of the gears and to arrive at the right engagement to avoid humming. See, all this is a trial and error method and takes laborious manners. But when Oda Oda Venkat, as he is fondly called, you know what you tell the customers when they complain, oh, what is this Venkat? The car has got more differential humming prior to uh, what it was brought in. You'd say, sir, don't worry, sir. Oda Oda Seria Guidon. And that's how we used to get rid of them. So we used to have another uh, moniker by name, Late Babu also. A perfectionist to the core on two wheelers, on um, matchless bullets, AJ Smiths, all the old ones. He used to do a wonderful job, but then he used to take terribly long period because he'll never be satisfied with uh, uh, the vehicle what he's assembled. It has to be perfect and trouble free. That's how he got the moniker late bobble. These are all some of the instances which I thought I should share with you. Coming back with regard to the design aspects, the best designs are from the stables of. General Motors, then as well as Ford. And I you know the uh, General Motors design was superb in the sense they used the ch separate chassis as well as the shell to bring out different models. 
like for in, uh, instance, if I were to give you an example, the different uh, chassis, different uh, body design, you can take the example of the Volkswagen Turan. Okay, Volkswagen Turan, as well as the Porsche Cayenne have the same platform, like what they call the platform nowadays in the current uh, scenario. They have the same platform, whereas the shell is different. So they can manage to have different models, different cars, and different shapes, and tweaking here and there with CAE. And mind you, when I talk about CAE and CAD, the cars which were produced without CAE and CAD were globally acceptable. And you know, what a thorough automobile engineer one must have been in those days to have produced a vehicle which is globally acceptable. Everything had a dual purpose. If you take the cars from the English tables, like the Morris 8, Austin 8, Ford Prefects, everything, you had the windscreen, but it also had a retractable provision to let in the air coming in so that you don't get stifled or feel claustrophobic while driving them in tropics. So these were all some of the design because they didn't have water glasses. Water glasses enable you to get fresh air when you open them. But these had no quarter glasses, but retractable front windscreen. With that, you can slide away and get fresh air. So just imagine, I'd like to give you one more example. If you were to look at the current day auto rickshaws, which I have designed a quarter glass arrangement for all the auto rickshaw uh, drivers, thinking of the flights during tropics, so perhaps nowhere else in the world would you see a thermocol sheet, which is curved in a parabolic manner and fixed to the right side of the entrance of the auto rickshaw to let in fresh air. Because the windscreen in those days had split windscreens. If you remember, the old uh, API autos as well as the bullet autos were also there in Salem and other areas. It had split windscreen to let in fresh air. Our designers somehow made a mistake. Probably they never thought of what's happening inside uh, the cabin of auto rickshaw because they take them for the granted and forgot the, the venturi system they should have provided by having the water glass. So I have designed a retrofit glass, uh, water glass, which I thought I should give it to them at a subsidized cost to alle alleviate their misery from facing the heat inside a cabin of a shop. So what I meant to say was, this uh, retractable windscreens, as well as the current scenario of water shops not having water glasses or provision in the front windscreen to let in fresh air, is another thing which I'd like to highlight to everyone because we take them for granted, we ourselves, because we know they overcharge, they are uh, rogues on the road, they'll cut corners, they will do all sorts of tricks on the vehicles, but nevertheless, they are human beings. Okay, if you imagine the current scenario in the automobile front is to enhance the driver's safety, comfort. That's why Volvo, the leading manufacturer, always thinks of the driver. That's why they provide much more than what you can ask for. They were the first ones to provide the blue light for the high beam. They were the first ones to give the seat belts. Okay. And uh, these, these are all some of the aspects. But unfortunately, once again, the paradox, again, in the Madras Chennai roads, that we don't see the Volvo buses which are flying with the MTC. They've all gone for reasons best known to all of you. See, mind you, these were no, no, uh, no maintenance, abuse, abusable vehicles which are flying and used to log in more than seven lakh kilometers. I have myself checked personally with all the drivers. What do you feel on the comfort? Excellent, sir. None can beat, beat the Volvos. The Volvos, again, the designers, hats off to them, the Swedish Swedish maker. The cars are Saab, Saab cars. You might have seen uh, the Volvos. And, and wonderful design. They can, you can never beat them on the design and safety. No compromise on safety at all. They still have this practice of five kilometer concrete bad tests in Volvo cars in Sweden. You know what it means? At the speed of five kilometers, if you were to go hit a concrete barrier, there should not be any visible mark on the exterior. Unlike what you see on Chennai roads, Hyundai cars, rear bumper and front bumper tied by a rope. Is that what a bumper is meant for? Instead of being a high impact zone, it tumbles like a cookie. Is that what it is meant for? We get, we are guinea pigs in the hands of Hyundai and other makers. Sorry to say this, but I'm very critical. Can they, can they stand, withstand the destructive task without killing a human being? No, they can't. 
unlike your cars, which were manufactured then, had strong bumpers. They will not kill at any speed. They will not kill, at, and they will not kill a, a driver or a passenger inside the car. In, perhaps except in exceptional cases where the very high speeds and wanton destruction. Otherwise, they are built to protect everyone. Just see the paradox, what we are now getting. And you know, this platform I use, I have several Rotarians used to come to me after the speech and tell me, these are all the unhealthy noises which I get from the cars. Which are the ones which are healthy? Which are the ones which are unhealthy? What to do before sending the car to the garage? Your authorized service center. How to be wary of the guys who are out to rip you with a very big uh, list. See, that's where Rotarians I urge all of you to have the minimum knowledge on the healthy and unhealthy. Open the bonnet at least twice in a week. All your car bonnets open up. See the visual inspection, what's inside. Levels of various coolants, the clutch oil, the transmission oil, the, your power steering oil, engine oil, everything you check, and the under, under chassis. I have had several Rotarians who had a nightmare experiences in their Volkswagen cars with the dealer refusing to acknowledge a serious major flaw in the assembly of the gearbox. This happened in a Maruti also. A loose bolt was there in the gearbox, which uh, I think ricocheted inside the gearbox and damaging the bell housing and oil had drained off and the engine, had, uh, the gear car had got seized because of no oil in the gearbox. This happened and you know, I drafted that letter. You know, the car had hardly logged in 70 kilometers. It was stuck at the toll gate near uh, Madhuran Takuma someplace. I don't know the location. So I came to the rescue and uh, drafted the letter and told him, if you don't do this, we will make sure that this sticker is stuck on all Maruti cars with the friends stating that you take, you've taken the customer for a ride by a faulty assembly in your car workshop or a manufacturing line. On this assembly line, I'd like to share with you another practice which have used to happen in GM with regard to design aspects. GM, Ford, as well as Chrysler used to have a separate bay. After the cars are assembled, new cars, they used to be pushed into the bay with the teething problems, where they had teething problems. You now car wouldn't start after the initial start and uh, they had to attend to several things. But with the advent of Japanese, first time right, okay? Japanese taught them what is first time right. Not that Americans didn't know it, but the, the systematic approach of Japanese was appreciated. And you know, each one assembly in the assembly line is a qualified quality expert. So they transformed each guy instead of having the herd mentality and finally letting one person check on the car, you know, which he might overlook a few flaws. You, each person is made to check on his own the quality aspect of each and every component which is being assembled. That's when the problem stopped, first time right. But just imagine our own mechanics. They were saddled with a 50-year-old design, 1954 Morris Oxford, rechristened as ambassador with all design flaws. And yet, they had to deliver exceptionally well-repaired cars. And they did it first time right. When, they, when the mechanic gets a repeat job, at least the exceptional few, it is a black mark on him not to have a repeat job at all, be it an ambassador or a Fiat or a standard car which are flying there. More so in Coimbatore area, the pride of India, the Detroit of India, not a single year will have only exceptions. Like when I mentioned first time right mechanics, a handful in Ch 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 Chennai city, the rest of them will say, sir, the spare part was at fault, this at fault, that fault, he will not accept his fault, but we're not in Coimbatore. If the car comes with a repeat job, he will own up his fault and do it free of cost because his pride about his profession is much higher than monetary aspects. That's where I salute Indians. Indians, had they been given an opportunity, they would have designed much better cars than what you have now. But even now, our guys are behind the computers designing one of the best cars in the world. We didn't get the opportunity. We were denied for 200 years, but in the Simpsons book of records, you'll find it has been noted and written very well. The best coaches were made in India with the lack of finish and other uh, whatever designing aspects. 
it was mentioned we didn't get an opportunity to manufacture cars always we would have excel what we are doing now we could have done it 50 years back and could have excel all those guys the, the american the, so the, the best of the cars are from germany they say the italian engineer design and german engineering is ultimate when it comes to cars but we would have excel them we are second to none which i would like to share with you when you look at the 50 years design which was maintained very well by our mechanics in ship shape and made to run without any problem that is the skill of our mechanics see they, they are exceptionally great guys very smart only thing they tend to be over smart and take you for a ride that is the problem with the mechanic not that there is any dearth of skill or talent they are extremely talented i've seen them by with my own eyes i moved with mechanic right from the age of 7 or 8 seen them what all they can do and what they should not do and what they can do they will attempt what they should not do and with the, at the cost of the customer and still get away with it because they are, that is the, uh, the what i would say uh, vicarious pleasure which they derive because of lack of education so most of them are school dropouts who have turned out to be excellent mechanics on diagnosing skills diagnosing skills at cholavaram all the cars used to excel especially my friend good friend dr sabu as well as our vicky chando and papu kamlesh patel used to have the cars tuned by uh, divakar satyanarayana and a uh, few others the cars used to perform very well extremely well no breakdowns because it's the acid test for a car's engine when you rip them off on sholavan race track such was a prowess over the mechanics uh, mechanical abilities as well as the skills they possessed coming back to the design i would like to touch upon uh, the uh, the single cars which were manufactured uh, way back in 30s and 40s mind you these single cars came in without any water channels the water channels what you might have seen in ambassador which is which is not there in any of the new modern cars no water channels water channels are used to guide the water flowing in from the roof to the sides and to flow to the ground but singer way back in 30s and 40s had a design which didn't have water channels at all similarly singer was a revolutionary car maker was knighted posthumously even though his achievements are much more he should have been given uh, the, a lot of uh, awards he didn't get he was a very good cycle designer singer sui machines then typewriters cars motorcycles tricycles and as well as jerry cans and many other things meant for world war 2 see and um, the, the manufactured or at well or at camp in those days it my the singer which is still with me has a three and a half chain long chain right that is the uh, timing chain which runs from the or at camp to the crankshaft it's a three and a half length chain okay in a talk about world war 2 i'd like to tell you what happened in the late 40s probably some of us would not have been born in those days but uh, there was a stiff fight between ford as well as general motors when it comes to power capabilities and acceleration mind you gm cars were huge like the buick eight pontiac as well as cadillac and then chevrolet were all huge cars but they had one upmanship on ford they had the overhead valve engine whereas ford had the side valve the ingenuity of henry ford was remarkable see when he had the side valve competing with the gm's buick 8 it the ford v8 has to pit the buick 8 at the post how he achieved it see he had the side valve engines are less efficient they are more gas guzzlers they are less efficient when it comes to bhp levels whereas overhead valve can produce much more bhp than a side valve engine so what Henry Ford did was call his engineers and told them, "Have the V8 design, side valve V8, the Ford Mercury side valve V8 was designed, and said, 'Okay, let it compete with the Buick. Buick is a straight eight, mind you, straight eight, four head valve engine, more powerful. But then that is where our Ford guys were remarkable in churning out a car which used to pit them, pit the Buick at the post." which gm could never stop up they could never ever digest the fact that a ford side valve could do this that is uh, the ingenuity of americans americans you know the uh, japanese might have taught them 
or the, the TQ, TQM and then uh, TPM on a uh, first time write everything when it comes to styling. You can't beat the Americans. The cars which they styled way back in the 50s, 40s are still being copied by Japanese. Because Japanese, when it comes to reverse engineering, they are very good. They can never produce anything on their own. So that's what happened in the 50s when a team of Japanese, about eight of them landed in General Motors and said, we need a prototype from you to be manufactured in Japan. Can you do it for us? GM said, yes, we can do it. Okay. If they went ahead and gave the blueprint, everything, and you know, the time frame was 12 weeks. Japanese said, that's too long. We can't wait for 12 weeks. We need it in six weeks. Can you do it? The GM guy said, that soon. And that's how, my dear gentlemen, the name Datsun was born. So what I meant to say was, the Japanese, the uh, reverse engineering, what they did, you know, to the extent they went to go ahead and copy is, uh, is very well seen in the Mini Cooper, the Italian job car, the Mini Cooper, which was a runaway hit by Alec Isagonis way back in 59 with the transverse engine. This was the forerunner for the Maruti 800 to come with transverse engines. This was a car which had the uh, gearbox under the engine. The engine oil and the gearbox oil was the same in the Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper is an, again a no-nonsense design, more, more glass area, wonderful engine. The engine is from Austin and Morris, the Mowog series engine, mighty performer. See, what had happened was this car you know, can cruise at speeds up to 140 kilometers an hour. Okay, when you soup it up, it had the dual carburetor versions, so you can soup it up. So, and it can cruise very well, very low on center of gravity. Therefore, cornering is excellent. At high speeds, you can corner very well. Nimble steering, front wheel drive. What more can you ask for in the design, my dear friends? So, you can imagine the Maruti 800 being produced in the 50s by Austin Mini Cooper. That was the runaway success. Only flaw it had was it had rubber bushes instead of regular suspension. So, the ride was a bit rough or hard, as you call it. Okay, otherwise a wonderful uh, design. Again, coming back to the design, see uh, the, the frugality which I mentioned, everything had a dual purpose. When you had the uh, vacuum generation from the engine, from the side valves, from the Ford Dagenham factory, they used the same vacuum from the engine to power the wipers. That's why some of the Ford cars in the way back in the 40s and 50s, when they go up the hills, you'll find the wipers losing their speed. They, they are, the speed of the wiper will come down because the vac atmospheric pressure is low and the vacuum generation is low. Therefore, the speed of the wipers will come down. These are all some of the, in and because when you have an advantage, there will be a disadvantage. That's a nature's law. You can't have all advantages and no disadvantages. So they made use of dual design and that's how we had cars, which you know, the bonnet hood, for instance, on a Ford Perfect, will double also as a latch for the bonnet. So th these are all some of the things which, you know, which was uh, there. And I would like to touch upon once again on the, uh, the designing and contouring. The Hudson, again, Hudson was a very premier car manufacturer in the 40s and 50s. Hudson, you know, had the low center of gravity. It had only a side valve six cylinder engine. But then this car, because having a, having a very low center of gravity, the Hudson Hornet used to give a real chase for the Ford V8 as well as the GM. See, but Hudson lost out you know, with, uh, with the competition when they didn't have the multiple uh, designs, having the same platform, giving different designs, which GM was very adept and they could do it. Hudson couldn't do it. They had the monocox uh, chassis. So it's a single unitary construction which didn't have a separate chassis and a separate shell. So they lost out on competition when they couldn't offer different uh, models. But when it comes to styling, the interiors, as well as the performance, Americans simply loved it. Their pockets were deep after the World War. They wanted very fast cars, action packed pack cars. That's where Hudson scored. I'm, I'm, Sarah is watching at this watch. I don't know how much time I left because I will quickly finish the under chassis as well as in the, uh, the rest of the things on the under chassis, GM had got designed the double wishbone suspension, which is the finest suspension when it comes to shock absorbing performances. Maxwell, the counterpart of GM or the subsidiary of GM in the UK also had the same double wishbone suspension, 
which is now order of the day. Double wishbone suspension is there in Toyota cars. All the major cars have at least got the single wishbone. Even if you don't have the knee action, they have the single wishbone. So single wishbone absorbs most of the shocks. And the McPherson strut, what you find in the new generation cars was again uh, the brainchild of McPherson from Dagenham Motors Ford way back in the 50s when he designed the Ford console with the McPherson strut. Just imagine uh, Rotarians, no knuckles, no uh, trunians, but McPherson with a turning arrangement uh, for the uh, vehicle to have the suspension beside with the coil spring and the shock absorber with the turning arrangement in a single stroke that was achieved by McPherson. That's why McPherson struts gets the name from the inventor. So that it was way back in the 50s, Japanese never ever did anything but to fine tune. They, all that they did was fine tuning and what you find now is only the electronics. Rest of all been done earlier by the Americans, German, Japanese, sorry, the Italians and the Czechoslovakian counterparts who have designed cars the best possible manner. As, and, and in those times, when you look at the engine, we had the side valve engine, side valve engine with sleeve valves as it was available, Willis Knight, Willis Knight cars. Willis Knight, Lanchester had the side valve with sleeve valve, very super, super efficient, super silent cars. And then we had the overhead valve, overhead cam, like in Singer. Now you have double overhead cams available for fast cars. So, and we had side valves with V8s. The Fords were the pioneers in doing this. The, the paradox, the, what you can find now is cars in those days had small air filters and small carburetors. But now if you look at the size of the air filter is huge and the fuel injection system and the rest of the things are big. So that is the paradox what you find now. And the, the contouring and the uh, reducing the coefficiency of drag, everything had been achieved way back in 30s, 40s, and perfect streamlining to ensure the car uh, grips the road like a ant anteater or whatever you call it. So Urumbu Pudi Nwanga, and the Idivande they achieved by uh, doing this. And the gearboxes were either manual, three speed, or uh, four speed with synchro mesh on second and third and fourth. Now you have gearboxes with synchro mesh on the first gear, what you have in the new generation cars, and you have the fluid drives automatic with the solenoid and like the Celerio having AMT. It's not a fully automatic, it's got a solenoid which shifts the gears. And you also have the fully automatic cars now available. Okay, and then the, the, the heavy vehicles had double D clutching, like the Leyland and the, uh, the, uh, the man trucks and the Ford trucks all over the hall. Uh, world had uh, uh, the helical gears, which you need to do double D clutching to shift gears. So it took a longer time to engage the clutch and shift gears. Or uh, there was a very wonderful design uh, by name Tiger Leyland flying in Mumbai. These were uh, buses with automatic clutch. You don't need, there was no clutch. You can just shift the gears. In These were flying in uh, double decker buses in Mumbai. And you know, when it came to seats, Ergonomically seats with uh, ribbed seat, uh, in leather were available in those days. Similar, similarly, suicidal doors. Now, okay, like the coach doors, what they have were prevalent in those days. Steering gears were either cannon roller or recirculating ball or rack and pinion. Now, all the new generation cars are got rack and pinion. Okay, and the transmission was earlier all rear wheel drives. Even now, BMW swears on rear wheel drives. Whereas front wheel drives were there in Skoda and Mini Cooper. Rear suspension were all semi elliptical leaf springs with arm type shock absorbers, McPherson struts in a few cars, and telescopic shock absorbers. Okay, the sheet metal was galvanized. Unlike, unlike now, you have the dip process, which ensures no corrosion. Electricals were all six volts and subsequently 12 volts. Okay, and you know, we had the electromechanical traffic heaters which used to go up. The arm which used to go up to show that you are taking a right or a left turn. Windows and glass were all tempered glasses as against laminated glass. The Americans did produce cars with laminated glass in the 50s. Okay. These are all some of the design aspects which I would like to tell you. And uh, I have one more thing which I would like to share with all of you is the, 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 most of the names like station wagon were all car and a pair 
why the car was called station wagon because it used to go to the station to fetch the passengers with huge luggages okay and um, without uh, see, without the north south divide i would like to share with you the ambassador who have not seen the daylight had there not been a severe push lobbying by the uh, the so called uh, the ambassador manufacturers uh, to make sure vanguard loses steam okay vanguard was a much better design car and except for a flaw in the steering gear which was a camen roller had they gone in for a rack and pinion would have been a wonderful car in those days similarly once again ambassador pushed out the makers ambassador pushed out the race between rover 2000 or standard 2000 and contessa rover 2000 or standard 2000 much better car in design and shape and but and uh, contessa was no patch on it but then what happened was the north south divide made sure vp sings gave us a decent burial to standard 2000 these are all some of the things which happened and uh, now and uh, since we have a few lady drivers here in our uh, uh, forum today i thought i should share like a uh, incident which happened the rolls royce you know rolls royce you know uh, manufactured cars which are bulky and uh, gas guzzlers they used to give only about 20 miles per gallon but this particular lady came walked in and said the car does not yield more than 10 miles to the gallon but they were all perplexed flabbergasted the engineer they said no ma'am it can never be true no me i'm sure i'm sure and i swear it's only 10 miles to gallon okay man they went took the car for a ride tested it the surgeon came back and said it yields 20 miles to the gallon to the dot then they said only ma'am we have a small request can you drive the car and we'll sit beside you to know what exactly the problem is lady agreed okay the minute she got into the car you know what she did she pulled the choke lever and hung her handbag on to it and started moving now you know why it gave only 10 miles to the gallon okay but similarly my dear friends you know something it so happened in a barricaded road there was a guy coming at breakneck speed and flashed his headlights and said i am coming first stop but the other side it was a lady driver who came in and had a head on collision the guy got on and said what a foolish thing to do i showed you my headlights on you know what the reply was you didn't see my wipers being on i said no 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 so that that is the logic of our lady drivers and you know one more joke which used to go around the, in, in those days was there was a lady driving a Volkswagen BT the car stopped somewhere suddenly and all of a sudden she didn't know what to do she went and opened the front hood to to her utter, utter astonishment there was no engine in it suddenly she found another lady driver coming in and stopped next to her and said what's the problem there's no engine don't worry ma'am i have got one in my car in the rear you can use that so that is the logic of, uh, that is the logic man and i mean no offense to our lady who are here sarada suran they are all expert drivers and very careful drivers because the most careful drivers are lady drivers and uh, i'm closing up with this i do not know if uh, my uh, time is over with your permission the video can be shown and the quiz i hope you all enjoyed and any questions you can sure to ask me i will give answer to the best of my ability and also give you solutions on new car uh, diagnosis which i thought i should share this platform i use in rotary to not only uh, talk about vintage cars vis-a-vis -vis contemporary cars but i also share this platform on uh, children safety aspects when they move on cycles on the roads how to take care of them how how could they have a safe ride back home from the school how to inculcate the habit of cycling how to make use of the forums like the fm channel 98.1 Uh, to have the hover sacks glued to the rear carrier not on the next to avoid neck pain these are all some of the things which i share how to make sure two wheeler riders with children on the tank to make the children face them instead of facing the road so that small particles do not get into the eyes and spoil the eyes because they seldom wear goggles or anything father wears but not the children these are all things which i stop and highlight to the two wheeler riders so once once again for a pair of patient uh, listening i hope it was interesting as you had all envisaged and i did match up your level and followed by the the, the quiz which i thought i should do, do it I, I, i hope the the show of hands will help me to go ahead uh, with the quiz or not so i am intently watching our president suresh sinivasan's face 
Okay, sir. The first question, my dear, you might have seen on the roads, vehicles being towed, okay, without the driver being there in the vehicle that is being towed. The rear vehicle has no driver, but then it is towed. You know how it is towed? It is towed by fastening back to back. Okay, when you fasten back to back, you don't need a driver to be seated in the rear, rear vehicle, which is being towed, which has, which has broken down or anything. But then my question is, okay, you have the answer how to tow. Can you tell me the force which comes into play when you drive the car, when you tow the car back to back? That is the question, my dear. In case someone wants to answer this question, most uh, welcome. Or if you want me to go ahead and give you the answer, I'll do it. I, dear Suresh, what do you say for this? Okay. Rest of the team members or the rotating, I'll give you the answer myself. When you tow a vehicle with back to back, okay, and the force which comes into play is the caster force, caster. Caster enables you to uh, let go of your hands while driving forward. But then when you reverse, that wheel, wheels will start turning on its own because caster is not do, designed for the rear, rear uh, motion of reversing. It is only designed for the forward motion. That's the force which comes into play. And our fellows, again, ingenuity and Indians go hand in hand. They are second to none when it comes to shortcuts. Shortcut kings, I call them, because they are very good at that. My second question is, how to start a multi-wheeler, uh, diesel engine, let's say a Leyland truck, okay, which is on an inclined plane, okay, and there are only two small boys, because our boys can start engines, everything, our mechanic boys in Namakal. This is again from Namakal, the heavy vehicle hub of South India, or Tamil Nadu, as you can call it. So how the vehicle is started when you don't have a battery which is able to start crank the engine, battery is gone, it's a diesel engine, all that you have is a heavy vehicle's jack, okay, and a long rope, okay, all wheels are intact, but it's on inclined plane, no pushing is possible. You know how it is done, in case anyone wants to answer, most welcome by show of hands, or I'll give you the answer myself, okay, our guys in Amakal, what they do is, it's a gyro powered starting, the Rope is passed between the two wheels of the rear vehicle, rear uh, portion. And then one side is jacked away, away from the ground. It's lifted. So rope is wound in the opposite direction of the engine motion. And then one guy runs pulling the rope while the other guy sits at the engine at the steering wheel, engages in second gear, lets go of the clutch when the engine, uh, when the wheel momentum has picked up and, and the engine is started. This is again, is another invention or you can call necessity is a mother of invention. That's how guys in Namakal do it. The, my third question is, how do battle tanks turn? If anyone wants to answer, show of hands is most welcome or I'll tell you. These are all questions, my dear, which I give it to the annex. You now who are just on the threshold of completing their uh, automobile engineering or mechanical engineering. Battle tank. Slip, slip steering. Come. Slip steering. Slip steering. That is, you 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 jam the you jam the wheel on either side, and yes. uh, that that becomes a pivot. You hit you hit it on the head, my dear my dear Rotarian. That's the answer. Correct answer. It turns in simpler language. It turns the way you row a boat. When you have to take a left turn, you row the left paddle by not paddling on the right side. Similarly, a battle tank. The chain on the left is stopped and you take a turn when you take a uh, left turn. Similarly, when you take a right turn, chain on the right is stopped and the left chain moves. So again, a next question, my dear, the clown cycle in circus, you might have seen, all of you all might have seen, watch the circus, even though now seldom do we have circus in towns, those days circus were there, but you might have seen movies also, the clown, it comes then riding with the cycle. The minute he lets go of the hand, the front wheel starts rotating on its axis. Can you tell me what is the reason for this to happen? Front wheel starts rotating. There is a difference. Again, the clue is this. There is a difference between the cycle, which is ma manufactured specially for the circus, 
and the one which is now being used conventionally on the road. There is a distinct difference. Those with keen observation powers might have observed it. If you want anyone to answer, please go ahead. I would like to congratulate the uh, uh, Rotarian Annex or whoever attempts road tractors. The answer I can give it to you, my dear. These are the straight folk cycles. The folks don't have the, cans the caster bend. You might have seen the regular conventional cycles. The caster bend is offered. In a clown cycle, it's a straight cycle, straight, uh, straight uh, without the caster. That's how the front wheel is. So when, when you have the straight arms, when you let go of the thing, the uh, wheel starts moving on its axis. So only when you put your hands on it, it will stop. This is the same principle used in toy cars. When it goes and hits a wall, it automatically reverses. This is the principle which comes, the caster principle which comes when you have the toy car reversing on its own and moving. So this is another interesting aspect which I thought I should tell you. Then another interesting question is shaft driven bikes like the DKW BMW in those days the, during Second World War and the 40s and 50s had always sidecars. Sidecars. I beg your pardon? Like any reason for the sidecars, I thought I should tell you this. See, when you have a shaft driven uh, 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 motorbike, the traction is low. When the traction is low, you have a safety aspect and then the, you might uh, skid and fall. To prevent this only, they had sidecars in bikes in those days. And, and more so in the defense, where the rough terrain used to be there and uh, they never used to be on terra firma on raw regular roads. This is one thing. And how does a uh, multi-wheeler trailer with a turntable reverse? Again, this is a very, uh, what I would say, not a very easy question, I do admit. But how does a vehicle with a turntable, multi-wheeler axle uh, turn, reverse? Okay, because uh, how it does is, how you turn or how you reverse it is, is uh, uh, only by experience. When you sit on the wheel and you start the engine, shift it to reverse, we need to let go of the clutch the front cabin will move to one side. You turn the wheel to the opposite side. It is only by trial and error, depending on the load conditions at the trailer, you, can you get a straight reversal. So this is one thing because of the turntable, which happens, which I thought. This is a question asked how to detect whether the driver is a very experienced driver or not when you appoint drivers for the fle by fleet owners, which I thought I should share with you. Okay, and um, Rotarians, I thought I should share with you another uh, aspect, interesting aspect is as a vocation, it is possible to bring in cars from US or other places for restoration. We have got the best mechanics and wherewithal and under Carnet scheme and restore it and send it back as a very good, uh, very uh, rewarding proposition, which I thought I should tell you. And, and it's also, there is a good uh, opportunity lying ahead of you because there are more than uh, 20,000 cars in the whole of India or much more and for maintenance as a uh, profession. With, with these things, which I thought I should uh, uh, tell you all, thanks for this opportunity once again. And the question answers, whomsoever wants to, please go ahead. Thank you. With folded hands. Hope it was not overbearing and you all enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, Ganesh ji, you can ask. Unmute yourself. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Kailash. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm, uh, I'm Ganesh from Rotary Club of uh, Chennai Harmony. Uh, and very good session, sir. Uh, I mean, I, I also love cars. And uh, and one more thing from your biodata, I heard that uh, you are a golfer. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I used to play in the Gymkhana. Yes, sir. I've seen you, sir. You've seen Sada. me? Yes. Sada was my coach. And we <laughs> very good friends. Great, great. Actually, I play with, uh, you know, Nagaraj and all? Nagaraj. Nagaraj, I do know. His father only inducted me, sir, Dhananjay. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Dala only inducted Dana me as well. Dala only inducted me into the club, sir, way back in 1990. Yeah, oh. same, same thing. I used to play uh, here also. Yes, because sir. I mentioned the word golf. Uh, yes. when, did, when did you stop playing there? Uh, 
you know, I've started again. I start in, in on and off. I've been playing, but I've met you along with my golf friends like Prasad, Shanmugam, and then uh, all the SRS. Everyone I've met you, sir. Okay, Shanmugam. Shanmugam is it? Yes. He's not. He's no more, I suppose. He's no. no more. Correct. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. I, I've met you along yeah. with him. With yeah. Him, along with Suresh and others. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, I have quite a lot of cups over there, but uh, I used to play. I mean, I, I was coached by uh, uh, another gentleman, Loganathan, no, in the no. 90s. It was a nice question on the vintage cups. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate your question. I have, uh, I mean, I love because I have some uh, latest uh, bins and things like that. I don't have vintage cars. I love because, in fact, I wanted to have one, but I didn't uh, see your vintage car, Buck. Now, uh, you'll, see, now you'll see it, sir, in the video I'll show it to you, sir. Time permitting. Sir, can, can you go ahead with the video and show it, my dear President? Please, please. Okay, thank you. Sir, sir, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for reminding, I forgot about the video. Yeah, with the video, we could probably, yes. <clears throat> yes. We can now. Uh, we have to give you permission. Conclude. To uh, can uh, can you get a permission to share? Yeah, it's already there. It's already, done. It's already right done. You can you can hit. Thank you. Their garage to cruise down the city's streets for the members of the Madras Heritage Coffee Club. Oh, it's a, it's it's a, only a chance to show off their priceless treasures and to bask in the admiring glances of the audience. Are you able to see it, please? No, no, no. no, no. The audio. No, sir. Only the audio. You have to click the video part of it as well. Video, okay, sir. Sir, we are not uh, getting video. Okay, so what do we do for that? Sir, please click the share screen button. Uh, share screen button, okay. And then select the video uh, window. Okay. Before selecting the video window, there will be two uh, icons will be there. Tick on that. That is audio, embedded audio, and as well as the other one. No, what I'm asking is there's one participant can share at a time. So I'm going to use. Yeah, you can, you can do that. You can share. Yeah, that's what I have done. And but you have not selected the video port. I have not selected what? Video port. Video, video port. You are Ashwin, playing through VLC no, no, or Ashwin, how? Ashwin, Ashwin, hold on. Ashwin, in the bottom of a Zoom screen, you see a button called share screen? Yes. Yeah. Click on that. Then you will get a window open. Okay. There, uh, that's all. Play the video. 120 cars and 60 motorcycles set off from Don Bosco School in Eggmore as part of the My TVS Heritage Car. Very much visible. Most of the vehicles are over half a century old. The popular actor, Kamal Hassan, a lover of vintage vehicles himself, gave each car the once over before these beauties rolled out of the venue. Our club's intention is to show can afford it and if you have the patience. For most antique car lovers, picture. it's just the joy of possessing these magnificent vehicles that is a thrill. But for onlookers, it's a rare treat. We're now joined in the studio tonight by Mr. V. S. Kailaj. He's a secretary of the Madras Heritage Motoring Club. Thank you very much, Ms. Kailash. What beautiful cars. Tell us about this club of yours. Thank you, Jennifer. First of all, thanks to you for this great opportunity to showcase our events. And this is part of the Metas Heritage Motoring Club event held annually. This is the fifth year in succession. We have My TV sponsoring the event. And we had a great show this morning at Don Bosco. And we had Chief Guest Padmasri Kamala Asin flagging off the rally. And right, but tell us about the cars themselves. I mean, you know, and does every member of your club actually own an antique car, vintage car? Yes, we have close to 86 members now, club, and uh, quite an eclectic group of individuals who got cars from 1926 onwards till 1975. We have close to about 150 cars, out of which about 120 came in this morning. And you know, it's a great passion. And you actually don't 
own a vintage car or a heritage car. You just process one to be given to the next generation. That's the passion that we have for these cars. And the younger generation is a great motivation for us. What was really the idea of forming a club as such? Is it uh, simply to showcase uh, what you had, bring them collectively, take them down the streets on a parade? Or what was the, really the idea? Yeah. Maintain, maintain the cars, helping mutually? Satarishi, like uh, the, when we formed this club, the objective was to preserve and protect. Make sure the cars don't reach the scrapyard. And also kindle the passion. I'm sure everyone who sees a vintage car or a vintage bike he immediately wants to possess one. And we make sure that with our contacts as well as the networking that we do make available cars which are available within India right. for members to acquire one. But isn't it expensive to preserve and protect? How much does it cost? You have to be very rich to have a vintage car. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we are not. So but anyway, let's ask. <laughs> that's a misconception, but I'm sure you would agree with me. You don't need to have deep pockets to own a vintage car or bike. Considering the buoyant economy that we, India is going through, you could still own a vintage car and you could maintain it very well because you have the uh, number of models available. You don't need to go in for an expensive Lagonda or a Rolls Royce or a Merc. You're still looking for a Morris Minor or a Austin, which is available. These were run of the mill cars available at good mm -hmm. rates. And if you want to buy one now, I mean, would it be very expensive to uh, buy and or is it slightly cheaper to buy and more expensive to maintain or preserve and protect? Okay, it's a Hobson's choice. You don't have really a choice when it comes to a particular okay. model. You might uh, have to settle for a model in case you have in mind that my father had a Sunbeam Talbot. Let me look for one. You may not get one, but you might land up getting a Ford Prefect. But you can graduate to a Sunbeam Talbot once you get into the club and probably go through the bulletins and other information that you get. Where such cars are available, it may not be in perfect running order. That's where you know, the real interest is kindled. You try to restore the cars with your own hands. You use your friends' contacts, you use your other friends who can help you with it, who got the wherewithal to repair these cars. But your club apparently does do that for people and helps yes. people. So do you have to be a member to be actually using that service? Yes. Yeah, as you rightly said, our club does it and we have as the Guhan who has helped many of our members restore car, all the cars and put them back in order. Because no, no point in getting a member into the club in case he has a problem. As committee members, we are all very well knit. We may do make sure that the cars are on road. That's why the 120 cars is not just a one day affair or a one year affair. It's been carefully nurtured and built over seven years that we're able to get this figure. And I'm very proud to share with you the fact that these cars are very well maintained. Right. Yeah, it actually shows, you know, by the way they were being driven around in the on the streets uh, well mr kailash in fact indeed a uh, great show that we had in the morning as we saw over there thank you very much for joining us giving us all those details and perhaps yes many of us who are interested in old cars would be contacting you very soon thank you I, so much for certainly look forward to it thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much thank, thank you, you so much We have one more video of my, on my Morris 8, which I thought I should share with you. Yeah. Hello and welcome everybody. And on today's episode, we are going back, all the way back to the 1940s, back when cars were... You follow the same procedure like how you played the previous video. One second, sir. Yes, one second. Two of them are raising their hands for quite some time. They may be their hands may be aching. You can answer them maybe in between. Uh, I'll go, I'll go for the question, Kalashi. Uh, uh, the question which I had, I have two questions actually. Uh, one is, uh, what what type of uh, do you face any RTO challenges? RTO challenges are there, sir. But then, as a club, as a forum, we've been able to uh, what I would say is get the permission uh, for accepting these cars. Uh, from heavy taxes 
and making it smooth for us to ply them on the roads. Because uh, the single fact remains that they've paid much more as taxes of all these years than uh, other contemporary cars. So that's the uh, logic behind this. Hello and welcome everybody. And on today's episode, we are going back all the way. One second, sir. I'm just trying to switch on the second video. It's not happening. Excuse me, sir. This is visible and you just uh, maximize the screen, sir. Oh, it's visible, is it? Yeah, sir. It's visible, sir. You just maximize the video. Um, okay, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. This episode, Can we are see? going back all see, the way back to the 1940s, back when cars were, Can you they see, were sturdy, sir? you know, they were hefty, they were strong, they were very well built. And the video oh, couldn't see. Cars of today. But even today, 2018, some of these bad boys still exist. Very well restored, very well kept, very well maintained. And that's exactly what we're here to explore. Welcome to the show. Okay, sir. We are getting the audio, not the video. But... Only audio is coming. Can you see the video? No. It's no. Not. We, we only heard the audio part of it, not the video. Audio part of it. Okay, sir. Anyway, you share the link. We'll share it to the people. So uh, the we can go hard with the questions. If any questions is there, yeah. Uh, Kailashji, one more question I have. It's it's more uh, to do with automobiles. Uh, see, we had there was a model by name uh, Thousand Maruti Thousand, yes, sir. right? Uh, uh, I, I always thought the styling was uh, was very different from the earlier genre of cars that came out. But why did it fail? Uh, I mean, uh, open to all of you, in fact. Sir, it was not a failure at all, sir. You know something? You see, had it been a failure, you would not have found it in the tracks of Sholavarun. Okay, sir. It's a low-slung vehicle. Okay, being a low-slung vehicle, it had its own disadvantages. That's when the tall boy design from Hyundai came in, Santro. Okay, Santro, again, uh, what I would like to tell you is, uh, design-wise, everything, Maruti is several notches above Hyundai. But when it comes to new models and different design, they had to uh, probably uh, make sure this model is not uh, continued. That's when they came out with the tall boy design with the Maruti wagon, wagon R and uh, other tall boy designs, which were a success. Because people also wanted a change. Otherwise, it's a very successful car, sir, thousand. And the, the 1300 ST, ST was also a great success. And a real performer. Thank you, sir. So, to me, the thousand was a, a failure because of it is very, very, very low mileage. Okay, but the for, thousand for its pricing. Okay, because it, it came with two versions, the thousand cc as well as the one point three uh, version. So the on this car and bike episode, we're going back in time. A little vintage, okay, no, actually. Yeah, we have a nice white board. Thank you so much for the no. what video scene, sir. No, no, only no, white no, board no. is come. Okay, so I'll send it to you as a link, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yes, I, I did some uh, background study on the thousand, and I thought uh, it had all the winning elements in it. But uh, and it was the same platform that they used for the higher version of cars. Correct. The later version of cars, like link. you said, one point three platform was used. Yes. Then I was wondering why did it fail, or why did it didn't take off the way it, it uh, they must have envisaged at the start. No, that was always a that. curious thing. You can't call it a total failure because the 1000cc engine was the same which is, was used in the Zen also. Zen gave a lot of my good uh, yield uh, with regard to the thing. But only thing, the styling may not have appealed to everyone and being a very low slung car, that might have been the uh, reason for, uh, for its failure. Because during that era, we had the tall boy design coming in, which was a runaway success. See, uh, the tall boy, the year, the... Uh, the car has to be acceptable for all weathers. That could be one of the reasons for its failure. But I don't consider 1000 to be a failure at all. Because still you have the 1.3 esteem VX and others flying on the road. Correct. Thank you, sir. I have one, one last question, uh, Mr. Kailash. Yes, 
Yes. No, no, because I, mean, I used to go for Solavaram race those days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember uh, Jairaman? Uh, yes, uh, Eddie Jairaman. Standard, yes. uh, standard 10. Yes, yes. Standard, uh, Jairam you special. Remember? Yeah, do you remember those days? Yes, I do remember Jairam special used to be there. Yeah. Jairam um, comes from... The a... Late 60s, late 60s. Yes. 60s, 60s, 60s. Jairam comes yeah. from a family of uh, automobile aficionados. Raju Gopal yeah. and company. In on Mount Road used to be the dealers for Duesenberg, Packard, yeah. Hudson, cars. So yes. the Jairam special, the no. runs in the family, the automobile. They were the they were the forerunners for uh, putting up the plant for engine valves, which are later sold to Rane Group. Yeah, sir. And one more thing, do you remember the Sharif Dayan? Sharif Dayan, yes. Yes, sir. Golfer. He's a golfer yes. as well. He's, He's also got a, a motorbike. Go kart. He's got the go-kart ring. And one more thing I wanted to tell you here, sir. And uh, I, uh, Patal, we can import. Uh, can we import the old cars, sir? Yes, you can. But now they have. Yeah, I don't know, wait a minute, I'll tell you because uh, I have seen quite a lot of uh, old cars in Cuba, Havana. Okay. And okay. all big, big cars, uh, the Dodgers and uh, play most of Impala and all those uh, things are uh, there in uh, Cuba. Correct. Quite a lot, not one Correct. or two. Only the and, RHD uh, version. All in running conditions. Uh, RHD versions can only be imported, sir, not the left, left and right. Okay, there, okay. There, there, that is one restriction there. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Very nice. I enjoyed your. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, sir. I, in I, fact, uh, uh, in, the, in the interview, I was, I was able to recognize you. <laughs> in the interview, okay, that, Arul, you are a little bit younger. I mean, I was able to recognize you. Very good. Very nice. I'm very happy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Actually, what year is the uh, year of manufacturing? You can consider it as a vintage car. Sir, cars up to 47 are uh, classified as vintage cars. And class manufactured after 47 up to uh, 75, we have got it as a classic car. It's a very broad, broad classification that we've got in India. We don't have the veteran cars, Edwardian cars and all that classification. We don't have because those cars are very few in number. See, in India, we'll have to first consider the fact that having these cars itself is a very big uh, hassle in terms of maintenance, in terms of uh, getting spares, everything. So we got the broad classification and put the act together, get the youngsters involved. The next generation has to take over. See, no point in we having all these cars. If they take over and they show interest, then only this in hobby can be pursued further. <laughs> All Rotarians can afford it. If I can afford it, all of you can do it. Yeah. Humble submission. I think President Raj Shekhar has got one question. Sir. Yes, sir. A new, uh, new tax is being introduced in 2019 for the green tax, 50% yes. more, and 50 years from the date of 2019 is a cutoff date. Ah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Arun, you would like to have a question? You have raised the hand. Arun Prasad? Yeah. Yeah, hello, sir. This is Arun from Velo uh, Sarpadi. Yes, sir. Sir, I got one part of that. I have uh, partly restored it. But the, I suspect I got an humming noise. Uh, it's, uh, it starts with my internet uh, ambassador. Have you got any idea how to reduce the noise or the computer? Sir, I didn't fully understand your question, sir. Uh, Kailash, he's, uh, he's rebuilt his old car. Okay. Uh, he has some humming noise. He's asking if you can help him out, if I'm correct, Arun. It's a, it, it, humming noise and ambassador, sir. Yeah, yeah I have got in Contessa. Oh, Contessa. Yeah, Contessa, okay. It, Contessa has got a humming noise. Yeah. Sir? It, it's got an uh, Isuzu engine. Okay, sir. What is the problem that you have? The humming noise. The engine noise is very high in the cabin. Oh, engine noise is very high in the cabin. Okay. Uh, it's an Isuzu engine. Because if it's an Isuzu engine manufactured in India, it is bound to have a lot of metallurgical uh, issues. Because I had a Contessa with an Isuzu engine built in India. So the uh, engine gave a lot of problems in the sense the uh, re torquing of the head bolts had to be done every 10,000 kilometers. You had to re torque it because it, it used to get uh, loosened up and there was a metallurgical issue on the head. So, it, those engines always have a problem which is assembled in India, but the engines which had covered 
about two lakh kilometer, three lakh kilometer, we imported from Japan and Singapore. You now used to perform for another lakh of kilometers without any problem. So that is the level of quality what you get for the imported engines, even if they have been used for two lakh kilometers or three lakh kilometers. They can run up to five lakh kilometers without any servicing. That is the level of uh, Isuzu quality. Kailash, can I share your number to him so that he can call yes, me? He can. He can. He can. Anytime you can. Any of okay. the. Uh, Arun, I am I'm, uh, putting Mr. Kailash's number in the chat box. You yes, can uh, talk to him anytime. Uh, yeah, He'll yeah, be yeah. very happy to help you. Sir, you, the other number is not in use. 9500 is a number which I use. Last five. 10467. Okay. Okay, sir. Please, I will gladly help you. Thank you, sir. Kailash, you will get in touch with you, Kailash. Thank you. If there is any more questions, we will go on. Otherwise, uh, I request President to come in closing remarks and vote of thanks. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, our speaker Kailash, for uh, an elaborate uh, talk on vintage cars, restoration, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, maintenance, and uh, problems and issues regarding the modern cars. Uh, there have been a few uh, car enthusiasts who would have really and thoroughly enjoyed the technical aspects. We uh, mortal human beings, uh, being what we are, we couldn't really uh, understand much of the technical aspects. Uh, I'm happy that at least there were a few specialists who really enjoyed and uh, made it more interesting by uh, asking relevant questions at the end of your talk. Thank you to all my co-presidents who uh, willingly agreed when I asked them to be part of this uh, meeting. Uh, thank you very much, all the six clubs uh, and their respective presidents for having uh, joined us this evening and making this uh, event uh, a, gra a grand one. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you. So you can just raise for the national anthem, I suppose. Just, uh, uh, President, just before we close, a couple of mm -hmm. things. We should thank uh, B. Caller Dilu but, uh, from Colombo Capital. Right. Uh, Stephen Roderick, she's been there for the entire program. So we take this opportunity to thank her. And we also take this opportunity to thank uh, Rotary Club of Thiru and for having organized the vaccination. Because quite a few of our members were also you know, benefited by that. We thank, and then with that, we can do the national anthem and close it. Yeah. yeah. Sir, okay. Word of thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Kishore. We'll have word of thanks, uh, request Praveen, Club Secretary. Yeah. Oh, Praveen, how's it doing? Okay, man, I, I, man, I, I take this opportunity uh, to thank, uh, <clears throat> I mean, considering the time, 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 you know, constraint. I really take this opportunity to thank all the six club presidents <clears throat> who had participated in this, Keel Park, Harmony, Thiruvan Muir Galaxy, <clears throat> Raya Pata and Mugapa, apart from other uh, the foreign participants, which what we had uh, from uh, Golombo Capital. We also take this opportunity to really thank the speaker, who had, as, as our president rightly put it across, a lot of technical stuff, but I'm sure that with this number now being available, uh, the car enthusiastic can independently get in touch with him and get your doubts clarified. Thank you, Mr. Kailas, for that wonderful uh, time and the explanation about the cars. And uh, <clears throat> I leave it to the floor to... Uh, kind road tractors, road tractors also. And of course, <clears throat> all the directors of the secretaries and directors of the, I mean, the other clubs as well. And again, uh, our uh, Srinivas... Road tractors, road tractors. Road tractors, road tractors okay. also. Sorry if I missed anyone. And uh, now I think it's... Uh, Considering, as I said, the time factor that we would go in for national anthem and then conclude the <clears throat> program. Shall we raise for the national anthem, please? Is it going to be played or are we going to sing? I guess we need to sing. <laughs> Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravid, Uttal, Banga, 
विंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल सित रंगा तव शुभ आशीष माहे तव शुभ आशीष माहे आगे तव जय गाता जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे थैंक यू वेरी मच दिस मीटिंग जॉइंट मीटिंग ऑफ रोटरी क्लब चरे मित्रा इज अजॉन थैंक यू प्रेसिडेंट राजशेखर थैंक यू प्रेसिडेंट निरंजन थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू Yeah thanks everyone thanks Suresh thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very bye. much bye bye thank you good night thank you thank you bye bye thank you thank you here uh for the part of this thank you everyone thank you good night uh, thank you rotin suresh for the opportunity yeah. thank you bye bye thank you jo hi thank you suresh thanks thank you bye bye thank you bye bye thank you sir thank you thank you thank you all thank you all good night good night sir bye bye good night bye bye and good night thank you so much sir thanks for this opportunity thank you satish sir and suresh sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you very much bye